I don't know where to start with the Raniomorphus amalgotantibus. It has so many of the nightmare-inducing traits of spiders from among many family and genus. It fires webbing like a bola spider. It spits venom like a lynx spider. It has a poisonous bite like a myriad of spiders and can see in the dark by sensing vibrations. And to top it off, a Raniomorphus is larger than an adult human. If that wasn't enough, I'm convinced that some of the caves on the island have actually been dug by Araniomorphus. But this worries me. Either Araniomorphus is a colony spider, like ants, or there is a much larger Araniomorphus somewhere on the island. As long as it is kept far from arachnophobics, domesticated Araniomorphus makes an excellent guardian creature for anyone wanting to avoid killing. Their strange web spraying behavior is also quite helpful while hunting fast, fleeing prey. The fact that this creature exists is enough to give me nightmares. Like the island's other arthropods, Arthropleura felsanguis has become much larger than I might have believed possible. It's a very aggressive hunter, but prefers to eat meat after it has rotted for some time and will voraciously seek out such delicacies. Arthropleura's blood has a very low pH, to the point that it can dissolve many materials. This acidic blood splashes back on anything that directly attacks it, weakening the durability of weapons and hurting attackers. Many creatures thusly refuse to prey on Arthropleura, fearing this unique defense. If that wasn't enough, Arthropleura also keeps a small reservoir of blood ready to spit at its prey. Like most of the arthropods on the island, Arthropleura is simple-minded and relatively easy to tame. It is an almost entirely military mount, useful mostly for attacking at a distance. Thanks to its unique defences, whether hunting or warring, Arthropleura is generally safe from all but the largest of creatures. What magic created the Scarabidae gigas, I cannot say. What I can say is that this creature is a perfect symbiont for advanced human tribes. Coprophagic, it eats mostly useless waste, feces. It metabolizes this waste into a more refined waste product, along with an oily byproduct. The oily byproduct is chemically the same as the oil found in the oceans around the island. Somehow, Scarabidae converts feces into oil. If that wasn't reason enough to worship the Scarabidae, the refined waste product is almost identical to fertilizer from a compost bin. Scarabidae makes me think humans have been on the island for a long time. Why else would a creature evolve to be such a perfect pet? Most tribes jealously protect their Scarabidae, whom are handily tamed with the skilled use of some well-handled feces. These wondrous little organic biofactories are truly a sustainable, green, eco-friendly source of resources for living off the land. Oil becomes gas, which is generator fuel. Fertilizer means crops, which is human fuel. The Scarabidae can power all aspects of island life. Megalania murraspeed is among the largest creatures found throughout the island's complicated cave networks. Reaching up to three metres long, it can traverse vertically up cave walls with little difficulty thanks to its powerful claws. Fortunately, Megalania's size means it is unlikely to sneak up on anyone. Unfortunately for Spelunkers, it is an aggressive and dangerous creature nonetheless. Like other Varanidae, Megalania is a venomous creature. Its poison is slow-acting, but will drain the victim's effective strength and health until death, unless cured by a rare antidote. That said, the Megalania's prey are usually ripped apart well before they succumb to the poison's long-term effects. The rare ability of Megalania to effortlessly climb sheer environmental walls makes it a highly sought-after mount. While it is by no means the fastest, strongest, or toughest mount, the manner in which it can effortlessly scale mountains, clamber up barricades, hide in trees, or upside down, 
ensures it will always have a place in any tribe's stables. Much like the island's other large theropods, Megalosaurus noctodominus is an aggressive cave carnival that should not be taken lightly. Unlike most of the other theropods, it is a primarily nocturnal creature. As dawn approaches, Megalosaurus begins looking for a secluded place to spend the day sleeping in relative safety. Conversely, if disturbed during the day, Megalosaurus is significantly more sluggish. Either way, however, its primary combat tactic is to bite onto its target, then lock its jaws shut in an iron grip. Only larger creatures can hope to break free once Megalosaurus locks its jaw. The creature then proceeds to gnaw on its prey until death. It's a terrifying, grisly spectacle to watch and a formidable tactic for a tribe to employ against more nimble opponents. While Megalosaurus is not the most powerful theropod, it is still highly sought after by night raiders. Due to its nocturnal nature, Megalosaurus becomes much more formidable at night, dodging attacks, conserving stamina, and attacking more accurately, to name a few of its enhanced talents. <laughs> Typically found within the island's caves, Titanoboa exornita is an aggressive creature that prefers dark, rocky areas. This extremely large snake, while being a member of the Titanoboa family, does not constrict its prey as most boas do. I believe this adaptation comes from coexisting with giant insects. However, the Titanoboa's venomous bite is so potent that it is known to paralyze far larger creatures. Titanoboa has developed a strange coexistence with other creatures of the island's caves. Being immune to knockout poisons and being unable to pierce the thick chitin of the insects, the species have learned to coexist. They often hunt large prey together. As they appear immune to knockout poisons, Titanoboa exornita is basically impossible to render unconscious. Onychonycterus specuncola is one of the few omnivores I've seen on the island. They seem to live primarily off the mushrooms and moss within the caves, but they attack almost any non-insect on site. They avoid Titanoboa whenever possible, which leads me to believe the snake to be a natural predator of Onychonycterus. While flying in the dark caves would be difficult for any creature, Onychonycterus' ability to use echolocation has allowed it to adapt perfectly. It can be found idly flying around the caves, as often as it can be found hanging from bits of the cave ceilings. Not large enough to be used as mounts, and not strong enough to carry much, Onychonycterus still functions well as a guard animal. Whether protecting a vacant home or members of a tribe, their relatively vicious nature has its uses. I'm not sure why, but the giant scorpions I've seen on the island are far more disturbing than most of the dinosaurs. Rather than simply kill its prey, Pulmonoscorpius gigantis injects its victims with a tranquilizing poison, then eats its unconscious prey alive. This subspecies has a large pair of pincers that seem connected to the same toxin sacs as the tail. I've never seen another scorpion that has this adaptation, but I've never seen another scorpion that's larger than I am either. Trying to tame a monster like Pulmonoscorpius gigantis sounds like a crazy idea, but I suppose the ability to knock out a foe could come in handy. It could certainly make incapacitating some of the island's other creatures much easier.